social and unsocial. Because we are talking about yesterday, we are talking about the unsocial aspects. Of course, I can tell you, a, a, a human individual is the best communicator in his own language. So he's, he's capable to com communicate anything. For that reason, we have the non-social aspects that we have, the non-communicable aspect. The silence is also communicable. For that reason, that long silence made violence. Women become violent. So it has a non-social elements that can be calculated, that can be represented through literature. Because they are, for a long time they are silent, they expose themselves. And they are trying to give, argue for them. And here I can tell you the fact, subjects are eligible to represent their own subjection. The sufferers are eligible to represent their own suffering. This is actually regarding the subject, subjects as well as the reputation. We have uh, good lectures yesterday, especially regarding this representation, a representation of the content. Either it is whatever the language may be, whatever the culture it may be. So here, literature represents, represented through language, whether it is a native or non-native. And language is basically cultural transmitting and cultural retaining. It retains culture and it, it transmits the culture even. For that reason, the literature, that is in other way, it helps us for a creative thinking as well as the critical thinking. So it is a given chance for any human individual. He may be critical or creative. It gives, it provides, even the literature and language itself provides the element, humanizing element. And now, learning other tongue, whereas we are of mother tongue. So we acquired language from our mother for that reason. We learned from initial sound level to sentence level from our mother tongue, father tongue. But we are here, we are learning other tongue, and we are, we are learning literature of the other tongue that is othering. We have another distinctive quality. If there is so many historical factors that why we are le learning English. That is another thing. And here, we have non-literary aspects and non-literary native aspects as well as the non-native aspects. And here, it is problem with the representation. And it is also the context that is actually yesterday discussed regarding relating to the politics as well as the religion. Political thinking associates with the fact, whereas religion associates with the non-existing things. And this is widely discussed yesterday. And to locate the aims and objectives of literature, yesterday it was happened. And my paper is basically try to bridge try to construct a bridge between the theory and the practice. That is my aim, because we are living in a multicultural aspect. So, a culture is within the cultures, because actually we have literature that is of folk as well as the classical. We are exposed to the folk literature, whether it is oral, the, low, the common life is represented in the folk literature, and the classical life is represented in the classical literature. We have both the experiences, because we have living in a multicultural India. So literature is the technical kind of ex expression of thought. It is an amalgamation of feelings and ideas, which gives aesthetic pleasure and relief, even to the minds of the common man. It deals with the moral truth and the human passion at every level, and heightens our awareness of human life. Thought is remodulated to appeal ideals, sensibilities reasonably, logically. It deals with the human experiences that represented. Thought is to train to respond. We are training the thought to respond to the situation by imagination, through imagination. Literary provides the imagination, right? Literature is a re record of the best thoughts, according to Emerson. The student of literature is to know the best thoughts that has been thought in the world, the object of study to gain intellectual per perfection according to Cardinal Newman. So, Okay, sir. Okay, then. Right. So everybody knows that the limitation of the literature. Literature at its limits, uh, limited sense, 
includes in all the human activities, activating with all manners. Literature in ordinary meaning qualifies the feelings of the beauty by perfect forms and ideas and also treats in a technical sense, deals with the rules of the literary combination and with the intellectual development in the history of mankind. And I have uh, justified in the artistic qualities of literature and the suggestiveness of the literature and the permanent aspect of the literature and the universal quality of literature. Finally, literature ap appeals to the widest human interest and simple human emotions. And we know that according to Aristotle, literature indicates the universal element, which is true, true for all times and ages, and the particular what is to the men, events, customs, cultures, and manners of an age. For that reason, especially for in India, I have given the trends in the modern literature, especially if I give, and for that reason, we have no lack of time. I am concluding myself. The destiny of India is being shaped in our classroom, is a historic statement made in the Education Commission Report 1964. It is all the more significant that at, the, at a time when our education today is far removed from reality, the humanizing aspect in our education is conspicuous by its absence. If one closely studies the social and the political developments in the country for the last five decades, he or she is in for disappointment and dismay. Corrupt political and social practices, a system of education, which has not its roots in the fertile soil of Indian, great Indian values, which has served as a guiding light to, to the entire world, a set of teachers who think that these values have to be, have no relevance to the modern life, a system of education with an irrelevant curriculum, which tries to evaluate the learner's performance with an unreliable system of education, which awards degrees and certificates, which serves only as a passport to the world of employment. And an army of students who are interested in anything but thinking of making a living out of it have rendered the, a good system of education should aim at establishing a healthy society in which every individual is socially useful and productive, individually vibrant, emotionally patriotic, and spiritually rooted. All the texts will be reviewed from this angle. The traditional literary criticism theories will not work here. At the most, a semblance of a reader response theory might be slightly useful because at its most basic level, reader response criticism considers readers' reactions to literature as vital to interpreting the meaning of the text. However, the reader response fixing strategies, alternate behaviors, and crisis resolutions will be contended. This will be supported by selected quotes from the original text. The teacher will have to be very careful and meticulous at this point and remember to choose the quotes that can be interpreted from the management angle and refrain from being a pure literature teacher. The overall method would range from lecturing to assigned group work. A conscious effort must be made to involve the students as much as possible even through just a minute sessions or project presentations. Now coming to evaluation. The evaluation questions will be based on the classroom teaching learning processes and the questions would be more analytical than memory based testing. There should be adequate choice, say about uh, 60 to 80 uh, percent for the students in the question paper per se. It could re contain brief essay type and elaborate essay type of questions. Now coming to challenges, let us see what they are. The challenges in teaching such a course include unavailability of literature teachers who can teach management principles. This is one. The, the concerned teacher by force of habit might at times slip into pure literature teaching strategy. The students may not overtly motivated to participate in such a course and time constraints. The probable solutions to minimize the constraints I list the teacher can read up on management books and try to use the register in the course. The second one, the teacher could take this as a challenge and try to integrate the analysis with management principles and self-motivate. Adequate prior planned preparation will solve the problem. Three, 
Accepting the student's first impression of such a course and educating them about how in literature there are no right or wrong answers, but just a substantiated opinion that has uh, and this kind of a strategy has resolved this challenge in the IIPM classrooms. Managing time becomes easy if the teacher sticks to using brief and briefer summaries instead of dissertation type of discussions. This is important as most management schools have as many as 72 courses to study. An awareness of the number of courses that these students study on part of the teacher would naturally force the literature teacher to sympathetically handle time. This paper is by no means an exhaustive one, but the attempt is to integrate literature and management as disciplines. The aim is to primarily highlight that it is possible to wed the disciplines while accepting that it is just the tip of an iceberg that is gaining prominence in many B schools across the globe and is a viable alternate career for the fraternity of literature teachers and the students alike. Thank you. Why we need ESP? Many graduates seek employment after the graduation, so their education should be completed by that time, and they should be provided with required knowledge of English. After graduation, students go for different fields, and their needs are different depending on their chosen domain. Knowledge of the vocational domain and specialized English are needed for operating efficiently in the field, and they are the two key factors that influence students' chances of employability. So English language should satisfy varied needs of people by providing specific jargon for the specific purposes at UG level to cater to the future career needs of the learners. One more point I would like to quote here. As inventions have brought revolutionary changes in medical and in technical fields, the specialized needs of people have also increased. New fields are emerging, and each field of specialization needs its own jargon to communicate properly and effectively in order to succeed in their fields. So adequate and apt vocabulary in respective field is a must. It is not easy to learn such vast vocabulary in that short period of time. So in such a situation, ESP courses would serve double purpose by saving their time and create catering to their needs of specific vocabulary. Uh, after seeing this scenario, I would like to suggest some changes in present curricula. In order to develop English language communication skills of students, there is a need to bring some changes in the present syllabi. Functional English should be taught from standard first. Basic English proficiency should be given by 10th standard, and advanced skills by plus two level, and then the jargon of ESP should be the core of English courses at tertiary level. English syllabus from first class to fifth class should be designed with 80% spoken and 20% written. <clears throat> and from sixth class to seventh class, students, it should be 40% spoken and 60% written, whereas for 8th and 9th class students, the syllabus should be 20% spoken and 80% written. Gap between mother tongue and second language should be cut down. And the change in the method of teaching and in the material usage of as well as change in evaluation should start from standard first. The same course materials and books should be introduced throughout India for English. Intermediate level is best suited for intensive teaching of language skills for more than one reason. That is, one is students are matured enough to understand uh, the working of a language and young enough to internalize the rules that govern a language. Moreover, at this stage, they are also more ambitious about their future professions and more serious about reaching their educational targets to fulfill those ambitions. If these changes take place in the curricula and with the revised English syllabus, it is expected that learners will achieve 
a tangible and considerable improvement in their English language and communication skills and refinement in the professional jargon. Such improvement in capabilities will help them to fulfill their language needs with the classroom and career needs outside after their education. The revised course should accommodate all the four skills of language, that is LSOW, and provide holistic and comprehensive training to learners at the UG level. The language training component must focus on improving the spoken skills of the learner. The teaching of spoken skills must go beyond discrete analytical features of language to the teaching of connected speech, interaction, and fluency. With this, I conclude my presentation. Thanks. Thanks a lot.